Okay, everybody, today I'm going to take on now, trying to continue doing the heater wires to the last two sockets here, and then resume with the rest of the amp. So, please do enjoy. too tight. Look at that. That might be a little too tight. I have heard that if you wind these too tight it can cause strain on the wire and increase chance of breakage and you want it more loosely wound so I'm going to try that again. All right. So, by the way, I've set this camera up so you can see a little bit better. If you look right here, it's uh, my 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 notch is here. So this is pin eight. This is pin one. Pins two and seven are what you do for the heaters for uh, the power tubes. I've got to. I just realized I didn't put that. Let's get all right. And then I brought those heater wires, you know, I, I'm running them down through here out of the way. The board will drop in and be locked in here and here. But those heaters are down by the power end away from the more sensitive preamp end down here. So, And then I'm getting them locked down in this corner away as well. So uh, next we'll be getting these. Oh, I've done something a bit tricky there. So part of what I get here now, if you can see that, is I've got it through both four and five because you want to jumper these for the, what's called, um, I guess that would be parallel mode. Because these 12AX7s, they say 12 in the name, but that's because they're supposed to run at 12 volt heaters, but you can also run them at 6.3 volt heaters and you run them parallel. So normally the ninth pin is kind of a center tap and you would put one of them into four and one of them into five if you wanted to run them at 12 volts. But most people, since they're already running at six volts for the power tubes, just run them in this point where they put one into the that halfway point at the nine uh, pin nine and then they just jumper four and five together so Now one other thing I still have yet to do is I need to connect a couple 100 ohm resistors from here to ground I just remembered. So I'll be possibly just bringing that into this ground here, you know, the bolt there. But I should probably do that before I forget because I need to get um, my arc control center tap created for this. So time to grab a couple 100 ohm resistors. All right, you can probably see that. I've just got that wound in so I can solder it together. One of my normal habits that I'm not doing here is to just quickly also make sure that I've got exactly the kind of resistance I'm expecting. So I'm going to turn this on ohms. All 
And that's 97. 97. Okay, so they're with intolerance. All right, so this is done now. So the first step will be to uh, get it carefully inside of this guy. Those look like they've got a good path to ground. Let's go ahead and test. Yep, I got 50 ohms to ground there. 50 ohms to ground there. All right, so that worked. So now I'll finish this last little part here. Heaters are done. I just need to make that lead dress look a little nicer once it cools off. But I will do that now. The only thing I want to do there is pick this guy back up and put it also down that middle line. And there we go. All right, heaters are done. Next step, honestly, needs to be to do this output transformer. So first thing I'm going to do is, um, so just to show you for a sanity check, it's always a good idea to check. Um, I am going to quickly test continuity on the output jack. You can see I've kind of got that blocked. The output jack has an inner ring and then the tip. Continuity. So this should be the inner ring, so the outer thing doesn't connect, that doesn't connect, but if I touch the inner ring, which will be touching the sleeve of the jack, that is my ground. Then my tip right here doesn't connect to this or to that inner part, but it does connect here. So I basically want my green wire to connect to this tab here and my black wire to connect here. So make sure you understand that and that's how that works, is that the ground goes to the center and the, you know, the green will go here. Now, another thing that I'm planning on doing this time this is a safety measure that not everybody always does and isn't mandatory, but it's it's wise to run a connection from this ground to a bolt on this chassis because these can wiggle loose and then you lose ground. And if for whatever reason you're not connected with a jack in here, if you at least have ground reference, I believe that can help protect your output transformer. So just relying on the physical connection to the chassis here is not always the wisest choice. So part of what I'm gonna do there as well is I'm gonna put a small grounding wire to that, so we will do that now. So what I'm going to do is use the um, chat that power tube connector to do it. So I've got some small 18 gauge here. All right. So what I want to do here. is get a really good pinch connection. You can see here, I'm gonna I wanna slide that in a little bit more. I basically am going to crimp that. And I wanna crimp it so that this pinch is physically tightly down on it. And I've got a little thing here that tells me where my 22 to 14 range is right here. Of course. So now my battle is going to be trying to get that to stay in while I crimp it. All right, that crimp was a bit ugly, but I've got it. And now I like to follow that up with a quick bit of solder to flow it in. So I get the crimp and the solid physical connection kind of double whammy. So I will now do that. All right, now I have a good physical connection that I will exploit into connecting here. I 
Now, one thing that I've been bad at in the past is I should really always solder these tips so that they're nice and firm before I put them in, but uh, on the twisted wire, but I also hate trying to bend them after I do that, but here we go. All right, next up, um, I will need to find a way to cleanly pull out my brown from the red because the red will stay down around here to hook into this main thing the same way this one will, but my blue and my uh, brown will connect it. Now, one of the things I learned early on in my days was that you need to, if the amp has global negative feedback, I don't know that this one does off the top of my head now, I have to double check, but if it does, you want to connect these guys with a lot of lead wire loose, just to make sure it doesn't squeal and howl. I'm going to double check on the schematic, the color schematic, to make sure, because if, it's, if it does have a chance of squealing and howling, then you want to connect it up to make sure it sounds good and if not swap those leads, and then shorten them down. So, 